many people in Washington have just stopped listening. And people have lost faith in their elected officials. We know we must earn back your trust by respecting the consent of the governed and staying true to constitutional conservative principles. We're working to end the bailouts, cut spending, and balance the budget. Repeal Obamacare and empower patients. Protect the sanctuary. And nothing but vegetables for me forever. Well, you know, hope springs eternal, promises, promises. The GOP making lots of them heading into the election. We just spoke to a Tea Party who says, well, they better keep those promises. Republican Congressman Phil Ginger at Georgia here to say that they indeed will. But Congressman, the dirty little truth is that that rarely happens. Well, Neil, we've got to try. And I agree with uh, what uh, Sarah Palin said on that clip. Uh, the, the American people are going to hold us accountable. Uh, I hope it's not just a two-year leash, uh, but the p point is we have to, members rank and file, uh, can't be led around by the nose, as the old saying goes, by our leadership. Uh, we've got to get in, in the trenches and make sure that we do what the American people like want what? to what do. Like what? What would you do? Well, well, for one of the main things, of course, and we talked about this today. John Boehner was in Atlanta. We were meeting with some CEOs uh, uh, here in, in the great city uh, of Atlanta. Uh, and, and repealing uh, the health care bill is certainly first on our agenda. Uh, that bill. Well, how do you repeal CEOs something with it, a I mean, Democratic president? I mean, maybe well, you could slow uh, it. Practically. But yeah, well, that's right. But the effort has got to be made. Uh, and then, of course, Neil, as you know, we've talked about this before on your show, uh, the, the ability for the Congress to de defund certain portions uh, of the appropriations process uh, that calls for spending, let's say, on the 15,000 IRS agents. And you simply say that's not going to be in, in the bill that we send to the president. I see. What about on entitlement spending? I know you guys, not you just particularly, but the general Republicans, talk a very good game on reining it in. But on Social Security, more to the point, would you curb benefits for some folks? Well, Neil, as John said, John Boehner, we have to have an adult conversation with American people. I know that. I know that. Would you, what would you do to cut? It, 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 Where would you cut? Well, I think we have to look very closely at, at two things, two very important things. And one is that the individual personal account option for those under age 55. Uh, young people need to look at that, and if they want to take a portion of Social Security and put it in an individual personal account uh, that, that grows and doesn't just sit there and stagnate, uh, then I think they should have the option to do that. We may very well have to look at whether or not it is, is uh, economically viable to, to continue to let people take early Social Security retirement at age 62. Uh, and, and so, yeah, those are hard questions, but if we don't have the courage... Do you think you should means uh, test the, it, Congressman, that, in other words, if you're well off, you shouldn't get as much Social Security or any Social Security? The same with well, Medicare, course, you pay know, higher we, deductibles, the better off you are. Sure. Well, you know, in Medicare Modernization and the Prescription Drug Act back in 2003, for the first time, we did mean test Part B. Uh, and, that, and that's significant. That's fully phased in now so that people on their monthly premium for Part B, uh, those who are above a certain income level have to pay 75% of the true cost, where everybody else pays 25% of the true cost, even though that's pretty hefty at about $100 right. a month. What I about earmarks, though? Do I, have to look I know at. I'm hitting you on a lot here, but I want to be clear, because I always hear you, know, you guys saying, we've got to do this, this, and, and I admire that. But putting the pedal to the metal here on earmarks, do you think they should just be stopped period Neil Over, there's been done. a lot of no discussion more, as you as you know there, I know it there's been a lot of discussion about this and certainly one of the options under our leadership Republican majority is to totally end no more forevermore no more earmarks uh, another option would be to I say I know well, that's one of the options look, would you be for totally ending them uh, I haven't made up my mind because there are counties and cities and municipal uh, entities that need infrastructure, particularly inner city where there's a very low tax base in many instances, right. decaying infrastructure, uh, and, and the federal government, I think, needs to continue to look at that. No, that's and fine, Congressman. Why can't that be legislation by... directly targeted for a said county or area then, then piled on as a sort of a, uh, a Christmas decoration onto a bill that has nothing to do with it? Well, Neil, that's a good point. You, you make a very good point. And, and the thing that c concerns me about earmarks, of course, you say, well, or anybody says it's only one or one and a half percent of the total budget. But the point is, if you have earmarks in an appropriation bill, you are going to tend to vote for that bill, even though that you know that it's larded up by every right, other right. member and by the administration. And, and that's, uh, that's the corrupting influence of earmarks.
But, you know, people remember your experience, that is, Republicans being the majority before you botched it. So what are you going to be like at an AA meeting and say you've learned your lesson and won't have it again or what? Uh, Neil, I, I absolutely think we're going to do that. I know when I was elected uh, in the 108th Congress back in two, uh, 2003, and, you know, you get up there and you're all excited and you have this tendency to sort of go along with the leadership, uh, accept everything that they give you as gospel right. truth. Uh, I, think, I think the American people have let us know loud and clear that they're not going to put up with that. And that you know, I'll right. be going into my ninth year in Congress, and I'm not, I'm not part of the leadership, but I'm going to be questioning everything our leadership does on okay. behalf of the American people. Congressman, thank you very much. Neil, thank you.